Hey guys, hope my mask moving around isn't too distracting. If you even see this video, cause I don't know if I'm gonna post this, if I'm gonna hit all my points. But if you're watching this, that means I felt like I hit all my points and so I uploaded it and made it public. This video is gonna be about Ellie Kemper and this whole Ellie Kemper situation. I really wanted to talk about this because I feel like actually this whole situation touches on so many different things like it's a prime example of so many different things that I've been talking about and things that have been like going on recently that I wanted to talk about it but let me preface this by saying that like prior to last week I literally had no idea who Ellie Kemper was I never heard of Ellie Kemper in my life <laughs> I've never watched The Office um and I I so she's like the lead on this show unbreakable kimmy schmidt which i have heard of but i have never seen not one minute of the show i had no idea who the lead was like i knew nothing about the show so um and i think she you guys some people have also said she was in bridesmaids which i've only seen once because i didn't like it i don't think i reviewed it but i didn't like it so you know i had no idea who this person was i had no frame of reference for this girl but obviously, I've seen people calling her a KKK princess. So that's my introduction <laughs> to Ellie Kemper, is that people are calling her a KKK princess. And I was like, whoa, what's this? We talked about it briefly during my live stream last week where I said then that I had looked into it. But at that point, she hadn't said anything yet. Today, this it's, it's Tuesday. Um, so I wanna say either early today or like late last night, she posted this apology or whatever you wanna call it on Instagram statement public statement slash apology and I didn't really want to make I thought about making a video about this like last week but I kind of wanted to wait for her to address it and see what she had to say before I made a video on it and so I want to start off by saying number one this is a prime example of what I've been talking about and what I talked about during a live stream that obviously I will include links information and related videos in the description box like I always do but the last thing where I was talking about celebrity familial wealth and how so many of these celebrities, people that we know for being in the arts and for being in entertainment, behind the scenes, they come from elite wealth, elite families, elite money, elite jobs, elite positions. I mentioned Kate and Rooney Mara, who they're, they come from a family of billionaires, okay? Elite, you know, Northeast wealth. The Maras own the Pittsburgh Steelers they own the New York Giants they own Yonkers Raceway like they are a sports dynasty family they are literal billionaires 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 and they have been billionaires so back to Ellie Kemper Ellie Kemper belongs to one of those type of elite families she's from a elite old money Missouri family like her family the Kempers they have donated hundreds of millions of dollars to institutions they have their name on like art museums and like universities and like galleries and i think her great great grandfather this is another reason why i might end up just like rec uh, recording this video at home so that i can include uh some exact numbers but if i don't do that i'll just like superimpose some stuff like you guys know i, I will do so you guys can see it but i want to also say that like her great great grandfather or something like that like was the chairperson and like co-founder of like commerce bank <laughs> like they have fucking money out the ass okay and people didn't know this and people didn't know this so it wasn't a secret because a lot of people are saying like well it's not a secret like obviously you can go look at her wikipedia page which i did and see it and you can read up on her but like if you type in like ellie Kemp kemper family the vast majority of like the write-ups on her and her family are going to be very recent so i want to start off by saying number one it's really interesting how when somebody's poor or when somebody's broke or you know we've been having all this conversation around like athletes and like the press and like press requirements and you know what do people owe the press and a lot of people it's very interesting to me that like a lot of like black athletes especially and artists and entertainers and musicians that you know they come from nothing they don't come from shit every interview right every post game interview they got the mic in their face to ask them about their shitty ass upbringing, right? It's draft day, and they got the mic in their face talking about some. What was it like growing up? You know, you you had a crack addicted mother and an absent father that was murdered when you were just a baby. So, how does it feel to now come into the draft on draft day? 
you know, right? Like, so, but we don't ask these type of questions of these rich people, right? Like, we don't ask these type of questions of these rich motherfuckers. Like, when they're going around on the late, late, and I've looked into some of Ellie Kemper's interviews, right? I've looked into some of her interviews when she's going around doing her promo for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I've looked at some of her interviews when she's going around doing her promo for various things. And the way that we talk to these rich people, the Maras, and, you know, is very different than the way that we talk to poor people. I know that Leighton Meester, who was Blair Waldorf on Gossip Girl, was born in prison. Like, she was born in prison because, like, her mother was, like, a criminal or something like that. Why do I know that? Because, like... I've watched interviews, because when I was into Gossip Girl, I've watched interviews with the cast where she was asked about that. Yet, when Ellie Kemper comes and sits down, when Kate and Rooney Mara come and sit down, when, you know, these rich motherfuckers come and sit down, and not even just people from even upper middle class environments, but people that are from elite, again, elite wealth and elite environments, when they come and sit down on the, on the late night show with Seth Meyers or whoever the fuck, they don't put the microphone in their face and be like, well, so tell me about your father. Uh, I think his name's, I think Ellie Kimber's father's name is David. Let, tell me about your father, David, who's worth $450 million. Tell me about your family and the fact that your family has their names all over museums in St. Louis. Tell me about, you know, being the veiled prophet you know, queen uh, or uh, of love and beauty in 1999. Tell, you know, tell me about that. Now they'll ask her about her time at Princeton. Oh, tell me about, you know, oh, you went to an Ivy League school. But they're not going to be like, tell me about how your mother uh, worked in the admissions office at Princeton and got you and all your siblings in. Okay, so like, so one of the, the first thing I want to touch on with this Ellie Kimper situation is, again, not only is this an example of what I've been talking about, about like elite wealth elite levels of old money getting into the arts and getting into entertainment and getting into everything just having their hands in literally everything their hands are in everything but also the fact that certain people have the privilege to not be questioned about these things in the same type of way either the way that we question poor people and especially black people and especially black americans right that the there's a certain level of probing that we do to other types of people that we don't do to these rich white motherfuckers right they get a pass right they get a pass they could talk about whatever they want meanwhile we're literally in the middle of like this whole media storm right now with journalists trying to argue that they should have the right to stick the fucking microphone in somebody's face and ask them the most invasive personal questions which they don't do to these rich white motherfuckers so notice that second thing i wanted to say about that as well in this same vein of who gets the space who gets the privilege to remain quiet it was a whole week before Ellie Kemper came out with her little Instagram statement. It was a week, an entire week before Ellie Kemper came out with her little Instagram statement. She was not publicly like, you know, they didn't force her to do anything. The vast majority of people, a lot of people was like coming to her defense, which they still are, right? And that made me think of Christine David and Alexi McCammon, which we've also talked about during like numerous live streams, right? Christine David led a whole group of pitchforks publicly against Alexi McCammon and Team Vogue publicly, publicly made her step down, publicly made her address it through a series of public statements, including a pinned tweet. Teen Vogue made Alexi McCammon publicly address that shit and publicly step down. When Christine David, the Asian, who called out Alexi McCammon, got caught saying nigger in multiple fucking tweets. They let her lock her page up. All her pages went private. Her social media is still private to this very day. Yet if you go look at her social media now, all her bios and everything say formally Teen Vogue, which means they quietly let her resign, okay? So it's very interesting. The unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt didn't come out with no public, no public statement, no public dragging, saying that, um, Ellie Kemper need to address this the uh, the office which I know doesn't come on anymore but you know they didn't come out with no public statements people didn't have people didn't have no public um statements on on anything that she's been associated with saying she needs to address this the way that they did for Alexi McCammon okay and that's something that we've seen repeatedly when people feel like it's somebody that's black acting up 
or getting caught, they get thrown under the bus. They get thrown under the bus immediately. They get thrown under the bus immediately by their job. They get thrown under the bus immediately by anybody that they're associated with. People will come out immediately with public statements of like, I'm not associated with them or I'm not a part of that or this and this and that. Can you go? Can you go up just a little bit? No, not even a little bit. So we're just gonna sit, we're just gonna sit back here. Has anybody else felt like the traffic and the people driving stupid has just really ticked up since COVID? Like, it's really been too much. But anyways, Ellie Kemper, similar to Christine Davitt, was able to really, you know, handle this quietly, handle this silently. I'm sure they were sitting on this for a week waiting to see if it was gonna just blow over and go away. And when people are still talking about it, when people are still sitting in her comments on Instagram six days after the fact, talking about some, are you gonna address it? Are you gonna address it? That's, I'm sure that's the only reason why a public statement was made. But watch, watch how we drag people very publicly, certain types of people, and yet other types of people get to just sit, sit back in literal silence and not address it until they fucking feel like it, right? White people. and rich people also especially like rich white motherfuckers elite privileged people like ellie kemper so those are the first two things i wanted to touch on because i felt like they were very relevant to some of the things that we've been talking about right now in terms of the media and in terms of the way that certain people are given all this space to be quiet or to quietly resign or to quietly address things when they feel like it and the way that they feel like it and how other people (laughs) black people (laughs) and especially black americans (laughs) and also poor people (laughs) are not given that grace are not given that space are not given that privilege and are expected at any moment to jump up and and tap dance and entertain us and give and you know publicly address shit and really publicly be dragged so i just wanted to start out by saying like there's some clear very clear double standards in the way that this has been handled from start to finish. Now, getting into her being from an elite old money Missouri family. So I've actually done a lot of reading on her. I've done a lot of reading on the Kempers. I've done a lot of reading on this organization, The Veiled Prophets, which again was also part of why I felt like, I don't know if if I'm gonna like leave this exclusively a car video or if I'm gonna get into some of like some of some of the deeper stuff but i don't know we'll see maybe if i decide to do a follow-up video or something like that i will ultimately but something about the veiled prophets that a lot of like her fans have been sort of like latching onto is like oh well, it's not the kkk it's not the kkk it's not the kkk she's not a kkk princess she's not a kkk queen it's not the kkk so let's talk about the veiled prophets let's talk about the veiled prophets so the veiled prophets were actually an organization that was founded in the late 1800s by a former confederate it was founded by a white supremacist and it was founded as a white supremacist organization the organization was actually founded as a reaction to seeing mainly black but there were also some white but mainly black railroad workers and metal workers in st louis that were going on strikes so the workers were stri- the railroad and the steel workers were striking they were saying that the pay is not good they were saying that you know like they're broke the hours are too long so what happened the elite white families of st louis all including the Kempers Ellie Kempers family they all got together and they decided like what are we gonna do they decided that they were gonna put on a parade and they were gonna put on an event and the reason for the parade and the reason for the event was specifically specifically to keep the poor black st. Louis population that were striking and some of the poor whites from getting power from unionizing, from fighting for better wages, from fighting for a better day. It was literally like some Pan Am, like some bread and circuses, like some give them bread and circuses. We're gonna distract them from the shit that they want type of scenario. And so they went with this group, the Veiled Prophet group, this organiza- this white supremacist organization, which it was. Even if you guys don't wanna, it's very much KK, it's KKK adjacent. It's very much KKK adjacent. Let me just put that out there. But there's a lot of groups out here that are not literal KKK, but they are white supremacist groups. So like y'all saying like, well, she's not really in the KKK. It's, it, it's a, she's part of a white supremacist organization and her family has been there. And like, and there's no getting around that. There's no getting around it. There's no jumping over it. Like that's the fact of the matter. Like that's the truth. Okay. Like that's it. That's the facts. 
So, this white supremacist organization that was founded by a former Confederate soldier, white supremacist, the wealthy white of fam families, the wealthy white elite families of St. Louis decided to get together and hold this um, parade and hold this event. And it was going to be the veiled prophet, you know, like the ball, like a masquerade. But they decided to have this like whole parade where the veiled prophet every single year was going to be a member of a white elite you know, a supreme in their mind family. It was gonna be an older white man from one of these families, but no one was gonna know who it was. It was gonna be a veil. And twice the veiled prophet has been unveiled. Once it was unveiled on purpose. Um, and I wanna say it was revealed to be like a police chief or something like that which shows that there's like deep roots in the policing with these white supremacist organizations. And the second time in the 1970s, black activists were protesting the group and they were protesting the event as white supremacists. Like this ain't some new shit that like just fucking appeared. They were protesting the group and they were protesting the event as white supremacists. They handcuffed them because it's a parade with like floats. They handcuffed themselves to the floats. They handcuffed themselves to it. They jumped up on it and they unveiled the person. And I want to say this person this dude was like some high and mighty chairman of some business. So again, we're talking about elite family, the white elite families that run St. Louis, that run Missouri, that run Kansas, like that run that whole little area every single year participating in this organization and participating in this event and this parade that again, the whole purpose of it was to make sure that the power, the money, the status, the jobs remain in the hands of the white elite, these few white elite families in St. Louis. And it started with the black workers and a few poor whites <laughs> trying to get power. So there's, that's who Ellie Kemper's family is. Like, I don't care. I don't care how much y'all like her show. I don't care how, how nice y'all think she is, like how sweet she seems, innocent. That's her family and that's the history of this event. In addition to the veiled prophet every year being a different elite white dude, I wanna say white supremacist, but okay. In addition to every year the veiled prophet being some elite white dude, the veiled prophet queen or the veiled prophet princess of love and beauty is always a young girl that's also a member of one of these elite old money white families that the whole purpose of this organization and this event is to consolidate all of the power the money and the influence within the white families and the white hands that is who ellie kemper is that's what she participated in that's what she took part in that was the meaning behind it it was 1999 i don't give a fuck because people are saying like it was a long time ago she was just a kid she was just 19. again this brings me back to alexi mccammon who made some tweets when she was 17 years old a decade a decade ago okay and people did not care they still publicly dragged her through the mud to the point where she was forced to resign so again who gets the grace and the space to make mistakes who gets the grace and mistake and space to be a teenager who gets the grace and and the space to not be interrogated about this by the press because i guarantee you the next time ellie kemper does a zoom talk show or something like that most likely they're not gonna bring this up and if they do bring it up or if they do bring up her family it's gonna be done in a very nice way it's not gonna be done in a probing way an abrasive way again the way that they talk to these young black athletes or the way that they talk to poor people the grace and the space and the privilege that's given to these people is something that seriously needs to be addressed in addition to the fact that we're literally talking about white wealthy like elite white wealthy families that are white supremacists really like in nature like the acts of what they do is white supremacists in nature exactly the same shit i said about the maras i was like the maras are literal billionaires like they get they got in on the ground floor of the nfl like the giants and the steelers are legacy teams they're original teams in the league okay like they literally got in there and they own yonkers too so it's uh, the the yonkers racetrack as well let me not say yonkers for y'all don't know what i'm talking about so it's like you have people that have bil billions of dollars other people can't get in there because what do they do all they do is they put their own family members in the in the jobs and in the positions right so it's just, it's just it's very funny to me and then they have these younger generations that they want to get into the arts they want to make art they want to entertain just like i said about chloe Zhao, whose father is a billionaire ind industrialist but she's making poverty porn movies about nomads and unhoused people and how the other half lives it's a little bit sick and disgusting and i did say in my last live stream do you guys feel like these rich people should have to disclose should these rich people have to disclose where they come from like if you're if you come from a family that has over over a hundred million dollars should you have to disclose that if you come from a family that makes over a hundred million dollars 
Is it fair for you to make more millions of dollars acting in TV shows and movies and not disclosing that you come from a fucking family that is a literal elite family that could afford to sustain you while you were getting into the arts? Again, as I said in my last video on celeb fam familial wealth, it's literally quantifiable that the more money your family has, the higher your percentage of giving, getting into the arts. Like, that's a lot. And that's not something, again, that when these fucking artists, when these actors and these fucking, you know, again, like these art people and, you know, these people that participate in Art Basel and shit like that, which is also a huge driving force of gentrification, is that something that should be disclosed? Like, that's, it's definitely something that has to be talked about and it's not talked about and I do like a lot of you guys said that you do think it's something that should have to be disclosed like these artists should have to disclose if you know they come from a family that has this type of money and I also want to say this about Ellie Kemper's little apology I feel like this is the thing people have the nerve to be against reparations when you have so one I also read this recently. One in every seven white American families are millionaires. One in seven. One in seven. For black Americans, that number is one in 50. One in 50. Five zero, which is actually more than I would have thought. And that's definitely like all fucking entertainers and fucking athletes and shit like that. So, the, but the, so like your average American, your average white American family, like, one out of seven are fucking millionaires, okay? One out of seven are fucking millionaires. 15%, 15% of all white Americans are in the upper echelon of wealth, okay? So it's not like the 1% anymore. It's the 15%. Especially in the last 10 to 20 years, the wealth accumulation has really accumulated very rapidly. I was like, and now they, but people will look you in your face, and these are people that have been accumulating wealth since slavery, okay like the Kempers these are people that have been accumulating they they're part of secret societies literally this is like the veiled prophet shit was a secret society okay they're part of secret societies that get together right old white elite money families that get together that have gotten together for literal centuries to decide how are we going to disenfranchise the poor blacks of our city st louis how are we going to keep the money and the jobs and the opportunities in the in our family, the Kempers, and some of these other families? Because every year it's like a different family that like has their turn as like the Veiled Prophet and the Veiled Prophet Queen or whatever. And there have been three black families at this point because starting in the 70s, up until 1979, it was a motherfucking white only event, bitch, okay? It's a white supremacist organization. And then after fucking the black activists started like protesting it and chaining themselves to the floats and stuff like that, they opened it up so that black people could join. But even then, you can like, I, like I said, I've looked into it, I've read about it. And the majority of the black people that have even been involved in this, like one of the black guys like came right out and said like, he regrets it, like he regrets doing it, like he regrets having his family be a part of it. Like they approached him to do it because they said that he would be like opening up the door for like other black people. But the whole thing was like racist as fuck and he like totally regrets doing it. So again, this is a white supremacist organization the roots at the very least of it and it was a white supremacist organization until at least the fucking 80s so the 80 the 1980s okay so i'm not really buying ellie kimber's apology because here's somebody that says like oh i'm such a great person like i spent my whole life trying to like do the right thing which is bullshit and you know i feel like when and she says something about like when you're getting attacked it's your it's your instinct it's your impulse to feel like everybody attacking you is wrong but most of the people that have been talking about me have been people that i've like respected and admired the, like their opinions on things which i kind of felt like i took that to mean that you know she considers herself to be woke she considers herself to be a liberal the majority of these quote-unquote white woke liberals are rich bitches okay how can you call yourself so woke and so liberal when you know for a fact you come from a family where your father is worth 450 million dollars like are you giving that money away bitch like open your fucking purse like save the fucking instagram apology and open your purse if you know you come from a family that has like hundreds of millions of dollars like that type of old money which you know Every fucking single role that you take, I feel like that money should be donated. That money should be donated 
donate it to a good cause like fucking reparations okay donate it donate that shit people love saying we can't have reparations because there's no money for it we can't even get a simple infrastructure bill passed through congress because people keep saying there's no money for it and i bet you ellie kemper is the type of person i would be like oh the republicans aren't shit i'm in favor of us getting money putting money into the infrastructure people don't understand that we don't even have no money in our american budget and we're in such a huge deficit because people are allowed to fucking hoard wealth and not even pay their fair share i was just listening to the radio this morning and they said that the majority of the wealthiest tax bracket in the united states white americans like the fucking kempers on average most of them only pay three percent in taxes because most of their money is not income most of us regular people that work jobs and pay income taxes our average rate the rate of the average american is 14 percent the tax rate so most people pay at least 14 percent on their taxes 14 percent of the money you make every year you have to pay back for the government for the richest americans that rate is only three percent and again the reason why is because most of their money is not in income most of their money is in different kind of investments which is why a lot of people now is talking about investments and getting into investments which i'm not against but you have people that for centuries have been hoarding wealth Courting opportunities, deliberately coming together, forming secret societies to keep the money in the hands of the white supremacist elite, not paying the amount of taxes that they're supposed to be paying. And this is not, and they said on the radio when I was listening to it this morning, they were like, this is not tax evasion. This is legal tax avoidance, which is a totally different thing. And yet you're going to sit here and be like, you know, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I consider myself to be somebody that like does the right thing and like blah, 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 blah. No, you have to understand that everything you've been doing, I understand that you were born into this family there's nothing you can do but you also have to understand that everything that you have done up to and including your becoming a paid actress ellie kemper is a direct result of the wealth hoarding the opportunity hoarding the racism the white supremacy all of that you being where you are right now not that she's ever gonna see this video but i'm talking directly to her if she does ever see it everything that you have right now is a direct result of that so number one the only thing that's going to change this is reparations period i don't give a fuck what anybody has to say if you haven't seen my video on reparations i will include a link in the description box that's the only thing that's going to write this number one because white americans that have all this money are already so far ahead that's like they have money that's it like that's it so number one they should have to pay reparations number two they should have to pay their fair share of taxes which i just feel like that should be fucking obvious and number three like we have to deal with this fucking this the roots and the foundation of everything in the united states are american chattel slavery the system of white supremacy like the fucking the the thievery of the actual land itself and then american chattel slavery and white supremacy and for centuries you have families and individuals as well that have been allowed to hoard wealth that have been allowed to actively undermine black american communities and us as a fucking collective that are now still to this day able to use their wealth and their money and their connections to touch everything and again in academia in the arts in the business sector they're everywhere they're in everything they don't have to disclose it everybody in the media takes it so fucking easy on them they don't have to pay their fucking taxes fairly like the rest of us and then she'll just sit there and write a little instagram apology about she's still a good person it's not about you being a good or a bad person it's about white privilege which I have a very old video on, is about the system of racism, white supremacy, and it's about anti-blackness, and especially, specifically, anti-black American sentiment that allows this type of hoarding, which we are now in 2021, we have all this crumbling infrastructure, and we have all this everything crumbling, and everybody's looking around like, well, but there's no money to fix it. Where's the money supposed to come from? So again, bitch, you can save your fake-ass Instagram apology, and you can open your purse. And we really need to start getting down to the roots of this rotten ass foundation and stop being surprised when this shit pops up because it's in everything. It's in everybody. Like, that's just the way that it is. And it's just really, really funny to me because I felt like this shit hit on so many elements of like, what the fuck is wrong right now? And everybody's looking around so confused that they don't get what's wrong. Ellie Kemper is a prime example of what's fucking wrong. You have people that belong to fucking white supremacist old money elite families that participate in proven, proven secret societies. Fucking they get together to figure out how they're going to keep shit away from the niggas. 
right to the point where they have amassed and accumulated so much wealth and it snowballs and it snowballs and it snowballs they're allowed to fucking not pay their taxes and now we have no money we have no opportunity we have no resources and people talking about something well it happened a long time ago so y'all just have to deal with it because there's nobody alive now that owns slaves and yeah we're all alive now and we're still dealing with the effects of slavery from the fucking motherfuckers on top like the kempers so those of us like the black americans on the bottom we're all still dealing with the effects so it needs to be fucking remedied and you have families that have enough money that it could be remedied but instead they choose to write a fucking fake ass apology on instagram that nobody even pushed them to write because obviously it, ellie kemper had a whole week to decide she wanted to address it and nobody pushed her so that's just something i want y'all to think about hopefully i touched on all my points that i wanted to hit in this car video if i didn't hit them then y'all won't be seeing this video and I'll be filming another one. But if I did hit him, food for that as always. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. There will be tons of videos and links in the description box. I will also put them in a pinned comment. But please check them out. Food for that as always. See you guys next time. Peace.